my name is Lou and I love our local native plants and this has given me the opportunity to talk about one in particular and I've picked it because I love the association of this with another love, chocolate, chocolate lilies and it's not just any sort of chocolate. When you come down and smell a little chocolate lily it smells almost like the best quality, am I allowed to say lint ball chocolate? So the little purple flowers here at the top of the flowering stem and if you look closely you can see the little uh, pollinating uh, mechanisms, the filaments and the, the well, if you look really closely you can even see that if you were a bee, particularly a native bee, you would come in here and hover down towards the centre and get loaded up with pollen before you headed off to the next plant. So chocolate lilies obviously are a lily and they have these tubers that go down into the ground. The other thing that's interesting about grassy box woodlands and a chocolate lily in this type of woodland is that you don't only find them under the trees. Once you shift away from the box trees and the cover and you could move into a classic grassland then these species would be in that part of the world as well along with a lot of the other little uh, lilies that you get, the other species and the other um, little forbs that grow between the grass tussocks. So something that's really unique to our part of the world in, in Albury and surrounds is we have this amazing area of Nalcan Hill that has swathes, particularly this year, just swathes of this purple, which uh, is mostly the chocolate lily that you're seeing at this very point in time. But if you stop and look and just to focus in, you'll notice it's not just purples, there are oranges, there are whites, there are all sorts of things happening. So if you get the opportunity to come out in spring in your local bushlands, you will often find chocolate lilies. Hello uh, everybody, I'm Clive Vogel and I'm a very keen distance runner and I do a lot of running almost every day up in Nalcan Hill. And one of the reasons why I like to run up Nalcan Hill is because there's so many wildflowers. But one of my favourites is called the Gorilla alpina and it's quite common all around Nalcan Hill and uh, it's quite easy to see. But one of the things I really like about about this, this plant is that it, it's almost flowering the whole year round and it's one of the precursors of, of sort of getting into from autumn into uh, winter. When you first start seeing the flowers of the Rivoli Alpuna, you know it's uh, all the, uh, the dry times are over and, and it's going to be a good, good winter. Also with the Rivoli Alpuna it varies a lot in its colour. Sometimes it's a really dark orange, sometimes it's yellow and, uh, and it can vary from, uh, from area to area so if you uh, just want to see a nice plant growing around the area and it's easy to identify then the Gulia Alpina is for you. I'm Helen and I'm a local Nail Can Hill runner, walker, jogger. Um, love to look at my wildflowers while I'm out here and it gives you a really good reason to stop when you're running to get your eye in. 
And I found a purple bearded orchid, which is awesome. I've never seen one here before in all the years I've lived around the hill. It's um, been quite a wet year, so I think the orchids this year have been spectacular. And this is so awesome. It's got a funny little fuzzy beard, and when you look at it close up, it's got like a little nose and two eyes, and it reminds me of an old man. It's absolutely spectacular, and as I say, I haven't seen many before. It's um, really special. This year on our camp have been magnificent and some have finished. Some of my other favourites, like the Nodding Greenfoot, has finished. Um, and this one is just taking its place. So they're coming and flowering in, in waves, I suppose. The other ones that have finished are the yellow, bright at yellow tiger orchids, and they're just gorgeous. So I'm really happy to see this um, and I hope to see some more. So it's a bit like a treasure hunt. Hi all, I'm Matthew Lincoln. One of my favourite orchids on Nail Can Hill is the Waxlip Orchid. One of 60, 60 odd orchids you can find around the hill. Orchids are really special to me because uh, you don't see them all year round. Um, after setting seed they go, they die off and go out to their underground tuba and then you won't see them until the next autumn or spring. Waxlip Orchids can easily be identified. They've got this one, one uh, hairy leaf about a 20 to 30 centimetre stem, and then this big purple single flower, sometimes one or two on a stem, and with a, a white labellum, the little tongue um, there that's modified, um, that sort of draws in the insect. Waxlips can be found in dense colonies on the hill. Um, and sometimes you can find hundreds of them in a small area. Um, and studies have shown the key pollinator for the waxlip orchid is a range of native bee species. Hi, my name's Judy Kirk and I'm a wildflower enthusiast. One of my favourite wildflowers is the copper wire daisy. It's called the copper wire daisy because it often has a stalk, which is sort of a reddy uh, brown colour and can also be twisted um, just like wire. Uh, the flower, once it's opened, it, um, it looks a bit like a dandelion flower, except on steroids, so it's a lot bigger than a dandelion. And um, it often attracts, it's very bright yellow and will attract many insects um, to the flower. And I've, I've often seen native bees just resting in the flower, having a little snooze. I've also seen little yellow spiders that um, are obviously there to, to get their lunch at times. Um, with insects coming in on the flowers.
I'm Shanna. I'm an infrequent user of Nailcan, but um, I'm very passionate about native species. And even though I don't quite know what I'm looking at most of the time, um, I'm learning slowly about wildflowers on the hill. So um, the species I'm going to talk about today are milkmaids. Um, milkmaids are little perennial um, lilies. So the flowers are white. They can be uh, a little bit tinged with pink and the, the insides um, uh, stamens and stigma are, are a pinkish red colour. It's only recently that I've become aware myself of the difference between milkmaids and early nancies and I used to confuse those two a lot. Uh, so early nancies have got a little ring of, of nectar around the um, inside of the flower which can be a purple, green or white colour whereas in milkmaids that's lacking so it's a pure white flower. Uh, without that little ring in the centre. Hi, I'm Helen Wardbean. I'm a local conservation biologist, gardener and uh, wildflower enthusiast. And one of the things I love about having nail can right on my back doorstep is the fact that I can walk up here and get lots of ideas for my garden uh, about what species work well in the local area, but also about what sort of plants look good together and how I can landscape my garden to get that really beautiful chaotic bushland feel. And I have to tell you, nail can this year is looking spectacular. It's really our Australian version of a cottage garden. It's an absolute riot of wildflowers, insects and birds. And one of my favourite plants up here on Nail Can is actually a really unassuming uh, flowering shrub called Daphne Heath or Brachyloma uh, daphnoides. It's sort of a shaggy kind of shrub and you might not notice it um, initially amongst all the showier wildflowers. But if you lean in and look close, you see that it actually has these stunning clusters of creamy, uh, tubular-shaped wildflowers, which are no doubt pollinated by an insect that has a long proboscis, like a, uh, a butterfly or a moth. And it has these gorgeous, sort of dark green, glossy leaves that are a bit paler underneath. But what I particularly love about it is its beautiful, strong, honey-like scent absolutely spectacular and on a warm spring day like today it's really quite uh, it's really quite noticeable so next time you get out on nail cam have a look for this unassuming little shrub and lean in and have a good sniff hi i'm kim ratnell and i'm here to talk to you about these beautiful flowers called sticky everlasting daisies. They're really, really common around the Albury Wodonga district. You can see them all over the Nail Can Hill and Black Range, and they're just beautiful. You'll often find them covered in ants, and these ones have lots of ants on them, and lots of butterflies and lady beetles love them. They're beautiful all over the hills here. They really pop out and they're one of the longest lasting flowers. They're called a paper daisy because they have these really dry papery bracts. And you can have them in the garden. If you can find them in a, a good nursery, we'll be able to get them for you. You can put them in the garden and have a little bit of bush in your garden and they're just beautiful. They can be uh, cut flowers. You can cut them off and because they're paper, like paper daisies, they'll last a long time as cut flower and they'll bring bees and butterflies into your garden. They're really good food for bees and butterflies, both European honeybees, native bees, and several kinds of butterfly. They really are a fantastic flower. Hello everyone, um, I'm Maggie Watson and I'm here to talk to you a little bit about some daisies. Daisies are my favorite of all flowers everywhere. I've even named my dog Daisy because of it. This is a paper daisy, uh, Leucochrysan albicens, uh, which has um, 
lots of different variations and subspecies everywhere. This is the, is the yellow form. Um, if you go up into the mountains, there's um, uh, the alpine form, and that one is desperately endangered. Uh, and there, uh, this one's called the hoary sunray. Um, and the reason why it's called hoary is because the leaves have this kind of um, smoky, um, foggy look to them down here at the bottom. And uh, they're just little rays of sunshine that stick out in the, the wildflower expanse here uh, on Nail Can Hill. And uh, that's where you want to be right now. G'day everyone, uh, I'm Dave Watson uh, here on Nailcan Hill uh, witnessing this spectacular wildflower season we're having and I wanted to share with you one of my favourite flowers, this, one, this little one right here. This is a bluebell, this is a tall bluebell, Wildenbergia stricta, uh, beautiful forget-me-not blue flowers, um, really widespread. I mean I see, I see Wildenbergias pretty much everywhere I go, right out west along creek lines and sandy country on floodplains, on rocky ridges. Uh, they're not normally this showy, they're normally quite small. What I love about them is very long stems that you don't even see. So it looks like this invisible flower is just floating um, in the in the understory. Um, so yeah, Wildenbergia, native bluebells, one of their names. Exquisite plant. Uh, and if you have a careful look, if you look right down inside the flowers, sometimes you can find a little native bee having a little kip in there. Uh, yeah, so it's just it's just a pleasure to be out here sharing this with you. So, bluebells for the win. Hey, I'm Kylie Durant, and um, I work with the Slopes to Summit Partnership down here in in Albury. Uh, and today I'm talking about the grass trigger plant, the Stylidium graminifolium. has this fabulous little mechanism for pollination, which I find absolutely fascinating. Um, one of the petals of the flower is sort of formed into a, a little trigger that bangs its pollinators on the bum. So, but these are a fabulous little perennial, or annual plant that comes up in spring every year. I'm Karen and I like to hang out at Nailcan Hill to check out the native peas. You've probably seen them. Um, there are lots around at the moment. Typical ones come in yellow and red, but they also come in other colours and they're flowering for a really long time. So there's heaps of species and if you sit still for just a moment, you'll notice that they attract lots of other things as well. So I like to watch the native bees on the native peas. They come in and they're pollinating, they're catching pollen, they're drinking the nectar, and then they'll take off. While you're watching, you're gonna see other things as well. You'll see flies and wasps. You might see a, a spider, all sorts of things happening all around the action of these flowers. Well, welcome to my backyard. This is just near Hod Street where I live on Nail Can Hill, and this is one of my favorite spots. I like to come running up on Nail Can Hill, and because I'm running and I like to keep running, I particularly like the flowers that are really stand out and notice as I'm running past. So what we have here is a yellow albine lily, and these are just so bright and cheery, and they just make me feel quite happy about life. These ones are just coming up and they're not all in bud yet, um, not all in bloom yet, but uh, when they are, they're even more outstanding. 
And while I'm here, this beautiful chocolate lily. And there's a few other lovely flowers around here, native geraniums, uh, which I kind of really love because you think of geraniums as coming, you know, like a, a weed from South America, but these are just same species, but just so delicate and beautiful and Australian by comparison. So my interest in wildflowers um, is quite remarkable, I'd have to say. My father, I grew up with a father who was a we used to have to go around the bush looking at ferns and mosses. And I thought, I will never, ever get into plants. But when I moved here and I got involved with Friends of Mayo Can Hill, which is the group that I'm now coordinating, I suddenly grew to appreciate the plants in my own backyard. And I just really wanted to get to know them and know the variety and start to appreciate the seasons and when which plants arrive first and what do I look out for next. So I've already gone through the, the, the wonderful period where we have the purple coral pea and the what I call a donkey's ears, the, the leopard orchids. Um, but now we're getting to the season where the chocolate lilies and the milkmaids are just in abundance. And this is when I first noticed the bulbine lilies in this spot. Um, a couple of years ago, and there was really only one or two, but now you can see there's a whole mass of them, and it just gives me a lot of pleasure that we have this nail can hill in our backyard, and it's it's an honour, really, for for me to be a part of a friends group that um, does its bit to try and promote nail can hill and look after it. Um, we do a lot of weed removal, so yes, I like yellow flowers but there's a particularly nasty yellow flowered tree called a broom tree that I love to remove. I like to get it out because it spreads like wildflower. So those are the kinds of things that Friends of Nail Can Hill do. Um, and you're welcome to find out more by going to our Facebook page. Um, but in the meantime, just come out and enjoy the wildflowers. I don't think I've ever seen them as good as they are this season. Hi, I'm Matthew Lincoln, uh, here to talk about wildflowers. Um, no, no, so I'll start fresh here. Is that all right? Yeah. We can find them in dense colonies. What else do you want? Um... <laughs> She's gone. That's, that's mine. That's what what we got? <laughs> we would like to thank. <laughs> <laughs> All around the action of these flowers.